Welcome to the Astrology Hub Podcast. I'm Amanda Pruel Walsh, founder of Astrology Hub and your host for our flagship show. We explore the many ways astrology can support you in your relationships, career, health, and personal growth. Thanks for tuning in. Hey there, astrology lover. Today, you're going to meet an astrologer who's new to the Astrology Hub community, but certainly not new to astrology. He's one of the world's leading experts in financial astrology with over 30 years of experience analyzing markets, working on the floor of the New York Mercantile Exchange as an astrologer, being a financial advisor, and helping people of all walks of life make astrologically informed decisions about their money. And since we're all watching the prices go up at the gas pump, inflation rising, and the overall cost of living increase, we wanted to introduce you to the tool of financial astrology, because it can take something that we all already love, astrology, and help us use it to navigate these tumultuous financial waters. Now, you're going to hear us refer to a webinar several times during this discussion, and this webinar is available to you right now to get instant access to. It's a webinar that I attended a few weeks back that was exclusive to Mitch's community. I reached out to him, asked if he would share it with our community, and he said yes. So this webinar is going to take you on a journey into the astrological historical cycles of the U.S. economy. So you can understand how these cycles of inflation, recession, gas prices, the housing market, and more track with astrological cycles and relate to where we're at right now. It's my hope that this webinar is going to help you exit the fear cycle that you may be seeing on the news and maybe you're feeling it too. I'd love for it to help you use astrology to help you feel less in the chaos of the unknown, to help you feel more empowered about decisions that you're making, and help you answer that age-old question, how long is this going to last? If this sounds interesting to you, you can learn more and get instant access to the webinar and an exclusive live Q&A, which is being offered as a bonus just for our community, by going to astrologyhub.com slash finances. That's astrologyhub.com slash finances. Now sit back and enjoy this introduction to Mitchell Scott Lewis while we explore how financial astrology can help you with your financial reality. Well, hello, everybody, and welcome to the Astrology Hub podcast. I am so excited about today. I have been looking forward to this and I cannot wait to share it with you. And before we dive in, I just wanted to tell you a little bit of a backstory for how we got here today. So I don't know if you remember, some of you that have listened to the podcast for a while, you may have heard me say that my love at one point told me that I needed to listen to a certain astrologer because he heard her on Coast to Coast. That ended up being Barbara Hand Clow, which I've had on the podcast and now become really good friends with. And I got a second phone call very similar recently. He calls me up. He says, I'm listening to Coast to Coast. There's someone on here that you have to listen to. And when he says it like that, I listen because it's going to be something good. And so I tuned into Coast to Coast. I heard this financial astrologer speaking and I went, hmm, he's really interesting. He was doing a webinar the following weekend. And so I signed up for his webinar. And this is how I found myself on a non-astrology hub webinar, which I have never done. We put out so much content that I don't really ever bother listening to other webinars or content from other astrologers. But I found myself on a Saturday morning at 7 a.m. mesmerized by this man's presentation for two hours. Again, I'm saying 7 a.m. Saturday morning, two hours, financial astrology. It was that good. And so afterwards I went, oh my gosh, I need to meet this. I need to meet this man. So I reached out to Mitchell and he responded and we had a phone call and it, it's been like this process of, oh my goodness, how do I share this man's wisdom and knowledge and experience with my community. And he has so graciously said yes, that he would love to share with you as well. So we're starting here today with the podcast. And what I would love, because we haven't 
covered financial astrology that much. And I know when I was new to astrology, I was like, oh my gosh, there's a thing called financial astrology. And there's people that focus on this and they have financial backgrounds and, you know, they, they have experience here. This is really amazing. And so I'm just going to tell you a little bit about Mitch and then I'm going to have him share his story. So Mitch is a well-known astrological trader and market analyst who worked on the floor of the New York Mercantile Exchange throughout the 1990s. Mitchell is a professional astrologer in New York City who has specialized in financial astrology, also medical chart interpretation, which we'll get to later, and elective astrology for the last three decades. His international clientele includes leading financiers, health professionals, renowned entertainment industry figures, and people from all walks of life. So we are... So happy and honored to have you here today, Mitch. Thank you so much for accepting my invitation and um, for being here. It's, it's great to have you. Amanda, it's great to be here. And it's been terrific getting to know you and see what your, what your work is about. And uh, I'm, just, I'm just thrilled, honestly. Yes. Awesome. Okay. So let's, let's start. Since this is your first time on the podcast, I would love to hear your story. How did you come to focus on astrology, and then also this emphasis on financial astrology? Like, how did this all come to be? Well, I got into astrology the way probably most of us do. Uh, came from a crazy childhood. Uh, my mother needed therapy, so they sent me, you know, it's one of those things. And <laughs> at some point, I was living in Cambridge, Massachusetts, and living across the hall from me was a self-professed witch, is what she called herself, who did astrology. And she gives me a reading, and I'm absolutely blown him. I said, my, my God, this person knows me, knows nothing about me and just told me more about myself than anybody has ever done, therapists or anybody. So I called up my brother who was living in the and I said to him, David, I just had an astrology meeting. He said, you're kidding. I had one this week too, for the first time. I said, well, okay. It was very popular in Cambridge in those days. And so I went to his astrologer and got a reading and he told me similar things, but from his own point of view, as you know, all astrology. And then uh, David and I and some other friends of ours all started to study astrology, first with Isabel Hickey, who was a very well-known astrologer many years, and uh, used to give frightening readings, as he <laughs> scared the hell out of people. Um, and then it just progressed. Now, I'm a musician by trade all those years, and I always studied astrology. I never stopped studying. And in fact, when I moved to New York a few years later, and I started working in the clubs, I couldn't tell people that I was an astrologer because they would all run in with their charts. And I'd say to them, listen to my song, my new song. I don't want to hear your new song. Read my chart. Talk about me. That's more important. You know? That's why we're all very popular at parties for astrologers, which is my favorite subject. So and so I, I, I had a career in music. I still do on, on certain levels. And uh, at some point I, I was working with with uh, uh, I was actually working downtown in, in the Wall Street area. And I had some clients. I was I had moved down there in a beautiful apartment with a view of the Hudson River, which is just cool. And uh, one of my clients came to me and he said to me, I was teaching him piano and I was doing readings for him. he said to me, does astrology work with commodities? I said, Sounds like a payday to me. I said, absolutely. Why? He said, well, cotton is trading at about $1.17 a pound. And it has never in the history of cotton gone above a dollar. It's unheard of. It usually trades between 50 and 70, 75 cents. It's exploded. Every day it's going what they call limit up. Each commodity has a certain amount that the futures are allowed to move. Cotton is three cents a day. Three cents in a cotton trade means $1,500. So if you're on the wrong side of a cotton trade and you can't get out, you're losing $1,500 a day per contract. If you have 10 contracts, you're losing 15000 a day. Mm -hmm. And so I went on the floor. He got me an analyst badge and I went on the floor and I was immediately, oh my God, it's like a casino that never closes. So, you know, it was amazing. And there's a pit for orange juice and there's a giant pit for gold and there's a pit for the dollar index and for everything in this cotton. And he says to me, if you can pick the top of the cotton market, we can go into business. So I said, okay. And I did a rush job and I, I had a, a, um, access to 20 years of the commodity. And so I'm doing, and I had my ratty old ephemerists in my hands and I'm looking at where all the planets are. And I'm trying to decide what rules. Cotton. And I did a little research and I will tell you one thing, Amanda, while I think instincts are very important, and I certainly have instincts, or I wouldn't have been able to do this business all these years and do what I do for my clients, but I'm 
a workhorse. If I think something is right or wrong, I go out and I prove it. And you saw one of my webinars, you know, the research and the homework that I do for this. And so I decided based on the motion of the planet and the, and the commodity, I only had uh, probably three or four days to do this. And I was working all day and at night, really trying to make this thing work. Otherwise, it would have been the shortest career in the world. And I said, there's a full moon coming up in Libra. Libra is ruled by the planet Venus. I believe that Venus has a lot to do with the motion of this guy and his three partners, three trading partners. I said, the full moon on Tuesday, I think it was, that's the top of the cotton. Well, he had to go to Europe for something. He was in the dollar index pit. He had to go over there to make whatever he's meetings or whatnot. So he says to his partners, I want you to sell to short one lot of cotton. Stand next to the cotton pit. And if he's wrong, get out of the tree. I don't want to lose any money because it'll go up and up. And after weeks of it being limit up, I go there in the morning and I'm nervous as hell because I, I want to be right. And I'm standing next to the cotton pit and cotton opens up, the bell rings. And normally it just goes limit up and that's the end of trading. For weeks, this has been happening. Opens up at what they call unchanged. Goes up five ticks, comes back to unchanged, goes down five ticks, comes back to unchanged. Nothing happens. Right before lunch, the phones start ringing off the hook. Sell, sell, sell. Cotton goes limit down for a week. We made money on that trade. Now they're all chomping at the bit. What about silver? What about gold? What about dollar? What else can you do? My God. And so I started to learn more and more about the, the markets and did a tremendous amount of research. And uh, in fact, what, what uh, we did for a while, one of my trading partners, he would have a book with, with the history of the commodities. In it. And I had my ephemeris. And I would tell him when the tops and the bottoms of the markets in each of the commodities we started to make money instantly. Wow. wow. So Mitch, this is fascinating. And so you, you kind of fell into it. And there was the, the like knowing that, of course, astrology does help with these kinds of predictions, but then you actually got to test it in real time. And more than, but more, more than that, Amanda, I'm sorry to interrupt. I learned more astrology from trading commodities and I could have given 100,000 readings to clients because I got to see it move in real time. You know, here's the, here's the, the moon rule silver, we say. Okay, so there's a full moon in silver. Maybe it's going to do this. And, you'll, and you notice the motion of the market and you make trades. Not every trade I make makes money. Um, you know, nobody. They say if you're 50% right in the markets, you'll make a fortune. Oh, yeah. If you know how to trade. Because mm -hmm. you get out when it's not going your way and you push it when it's going your way. And, you know. Mm. So why doesn't everybody know about this? Like if astrology is so helpful and could, could help, people make money and, and you don't need to be an astrologer or have a background in finance to actually use it though. Right. I know to, to learn how to do what you do, but like in order to use it, do you have to have that kind well, of background? Again, I, I am by nature, probably a little OCD. When I get into something, I throw myself into it completely. And then if something else interests me, I might move, but I'll do the same thing. When I learned how to play the piano, I used to practice six hours a day. Mm -hmm. My friends would kidnap me, They'd put me in the car and tell me we're going out for pizza and drive me up to New Hampshire for the weekend because I oh. wouldn't leave the piano. Oh. Now, first of all, astrology has been used. <laughs> I'm working on a book about financial astrology. And in the introduction to it, I'm actually going back to some biblical references to show how I think astrology goes back that far. Wow. And, and, uh, and, but specifically in financial matters in world and nations decisions and whatnot. So there is a, 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 a quote that's attributed to uh, JP Morgan. I think you and I talked about it the other day. And again, it's, it's, we, we can't prove that he actually said it. It doesn't matter whether he did or he did. But the quote is millionaires don't use astrology. Billionaires do. Mm. And J.P. Morgan used Evangeline Adams as his astrologer, very famous astrologer from many years before. And, uh, and he was fairly successful. In fact, at one point during a, a depression, J.P. Morgan single-handedly bailed out the United States government. You couldn't do it today because we've created trillions and trillions and trillions of dollars. But back then, we were a smaller nation. Our banking was, you know, fell into trouble and he had enough capital and he bailed out the government, mm. um, preventing a worse depression. Things have changed. Since I've been doing astrology, things have changed. The markets trade differently now than they did 25 years ago. 
For example, um, people say to me, what about gold? Everybody's interested in the metals. I say gold makes a nice ring or you can get a necklace with it, earrings, you know, it's lovely. In terms of its usefulness, in my opinion, remember this, this is all my opinion. I think gold is an absolutely useless commodity to trade. Mm. It is not going to save the world. If the world ends and you've got gold coins, you think a truck is going to drive up to your house with food and you, you give them a gold coin, they're going to fill your refrigerator. If the world ends, all of this collapses. I don't think that. Also, gold is very, very expensive to hold. You buy a gold coin, it costs you whatever it is today, say, say $1,700 for an ounce of gold. Let's say you got 10 of them, $17,000 of your money that isn't being put into AT&T or Apple or something else where you might make money. on Gold was stuck at $280 an ounce for two decades. Didn't move because we weren't on the gold standard anymore. Nobody was trading gold. Then it pops and it catches up with what we is what we call inflation, but that's not what we're talking about today with the nine percent. And it pops and it runs all the way up to seventeen hundred dollars an ounce, and people go nuts. And everybody's telling me gold's going to ten thousand dollars an ounce. And I say to them, no, it's not. I say to them, if it goes to ten thousand dollars an ounce, it's because the world is dead. What it did was it ran up to a place that was comparable to what everything else is trading at. Now it's in a trading range. It'll go down to 1,400 ounces, it'll run back up to 1,700, it'll go down to 1,200, it'll go back up again. Maybe it'll make 2,000 at some point, but we can't go back on the gold standard for many reasons, not the least of which is that an ounce of gold would have to be worth a million dollars for any country to back its currency with gold mm -hmm. because we have created trillions of dollars in what we call fiat money. Mm. which means I got a picture of Benjamin Franklin on a piece of paper. I give it to you. You give me a new pair of sneakers. Mm. We agree. That's money. So while, and while I was on the floor, I met several other astrologers. Mm. They had their own way of looking at it. They looked at it differently than I did. It doesn't. I'll tell you a funny little story. There was a guy in the dollar pit who was older than, than most of the other traders, probably younger than I am now. <laughs> and he, he used to say to me, Hey, star man, Hey, star man. And he would make fun of me. And one day I went over to him. I said, John, why do you do this? He said to me, I'm going to tell you something. But if you tell any of them, I'll, I'm going to deny it. He said, I traded silver for 20 years. And I had a friend who was an astrologer. And my friend told me when the new moon was, the full moon was, and I bought silver on the new moon and I shorted it on the full moon. And I made a living for 20 years. Wow. Fascinating, right? Amazing. And he knew nothing about astrology, but the patterns, and there are times, of course, for a month or two, he wouldn't make money. But, you know, in, in, if, if you're going to trade, there are two things you do. One is day trade. Oh, you buy Apple, you sell it. You buy it back later, you sell it again. You buy, you know. And the other is position trade. Uh, I'm very hot on Ford, for example, right now. I think Ford is, is a great company. I think they're about to do wonderful things. And the stock is suppressed now. It's down around $14. And again, I'm not telling people to buy any stocks. That's not my purpose of of chatting with you about this because I don't want them to lose money. They have to do their own diligence and they have to make sure that they know it. But there are companies, let's say, that I that I like and I'll buy them and I'll buy the stock and I'll hold on to it. Maybe, well, AMC, I bought it $2 a share. And then the meme, they ran and became a meme stock. They ran it up to $20 a share. And I was just coming home when my doorman who follows stocks said to me, you know, AMC that you told me to buy? He said, it's at $20. So I ran upstairs to try and sell it. And they <laughs> shut it down because it was a hot, what they call a fast moving market. I couldn't make my, my trade for about an hour. Finally, it opened up and I got out of it. 19, 17, I made a lot of money. They dropped it down to $9 a share. I bought it back. It ran up to six and I sold it. And I had, you know, had fun on the beach. <laughs> nice, nice. Okay, Mitch, so what about regular people? Like I'm not a trader. I'm, I don't have a background in finance. I know some things about astrology, but how, how can people like me use astrology and use knowledge of the cycles to help us make informed decisions? Well, one of the things I did in the webinar that you watched was I went back historically and showed some of the recurring cycles that happen when there are bubbles or busts. There are things that you can do. Uh, for one thing, if you like trade, not everybody likes to go to the casino. If I go to Atlantic City with my girlfriend, she might want to go shopping and see shows while I'm playing blackjack or craps or something. Uh, we both love the beach, so that's something we haven't got. Um, but if you do enjoy the thrill of the ride, so to speak, 
Well, then what you can do is you can open up an account with TD Ameritrade or Merrill uh, or Schwab or E-Trade and, you know, put a few bucks into it. You don't have to put a lot of money or you can also do what's called paper trade where you're not making trades. You're making trades only on paper. Mm. And then you see how you make money and you lose money. And TD is particularly good. They're, they're a wonderful company because you can get them on the phone anytime. If you don't know something, they'll sit there for an hour and tell you. Wow. It's really quite remarkable. I was amazed when I got into TD. I'd use other, other trading systems and now I'm, I'm hooked on TD. I love them. Amazing. And you can learn how to trade without risking anything. Oh. Or let's say you have a few thousand dollars you want to put in there and, you know, okay, you cross your fingers, you buy five shares of something and, you, you know, and you watch it and if it goes down, you get nervous, you get out of it. You don't have to be, unless you're an obsessive compulsive, you don't have to be crazy about it. At all. So one thing that you can do is learn a lot about trading. And there are plenty of, of lessons and classes and things about trading itself. People who do this for a living, they teach you how to trade. Mixing the astrology in with it, well, that takes the knowledge of two different things. Right. What you can do with the astrology, look, what I, what I do with my classes and my lectures in financial astrology is I, of course, I say, look, I'm going to teach you, but it took me years to learn what I know. You're not going to learn it. People, you know, think that they, everybody's, everybody's a genius. Okay, that's great. Um, and you can still be a genius and screw it up. <laughs> True. You need to take the time to understand the correlation between these things. That's what I try to teach, not just astrology. First of all, I was an astrologer for many years before I went on the floor of the exchange. Many financial astrologers are financial people who then study astrology. Mm. Some of them could never give you a reading. They don't know. Mm. You know, well, I have a pain in my back. I don't know what that means. Mm. But they understand the cycles of astrology. And they, because they, they can take, they can uh, uh, extra extra, uh, what are the terms, pull out the, the ephemeris from the program and watch how the stocks, I mean, how the planets move and then correlate that with the motion of a commodity or a stock or something else. So there are things that you can learn that way too. Um, those who have at least a functional knowledge of astrology and can follow the pattern of the planets and read the charts, and, you know, they've, they learn more, of course, from my webinars. You you can follow. You you knew what I was doing when I was bringing up. Oh, charts. completely. Yes, that's what Saturn and Uranus squares and oppositions and yeah. all of those. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So now there are a number of ways that this can be used. Um, I use the first trade of a stock. This is another financial astrologer wrote this couple of books about it. In fact, I was using his book long before I ever met him. Mm. And now when I run into him at the conferences, you know, friendly and we have, you know, a drink together at dinner or something. Um, but this was uh, uh, long before I ever met him. I read, I got his book and I read it. I said, oh my God. And I started to see if I could go back in the commodities because that's what I was dealing with. Now, the problem is cotton has been traded since prehistoric times. I don't know. The first time they got a sheep and they said, wow, look at this soft stuff. So you can't really see when the commodity of cotton first started to trade. But you can, and oil too, but you can look at the first time that oil traded on the mercantile exchange. 1983. Uh, of course, oil had been used for centuries before that, but you have something to work with. You have a template to work. When I look at somebody, you know, uh, said to me, uh, one of my clients wanted to invest in the Uber IPO. So I took a look at the first trade, the IPO, and I looked at the trade at the chart and I said, yeah, just open the window and throw your money out. He said to me, really? But I really like it. I said, I understand. I mean, I like a lot of things too, but that doesn't mean I want to invest in them. And that proved to be right. Really? That wouldn't have been a good investment. The IPO collapsed. Oh, and, and you could see that in the astrological chart of what moment? What moment were you using? The first trade? Is that what you said? The very, the, the very first trade. Yes. Okay. Mm. Look, I also do, I, I do work for uh, uh, one of my clients uh, sells sports tickets. For a living okay and not you know scalping them he's got legitimate business and, and uh he heard me on coast to coast and he hired me to tell him who's going to be in the playoffs and we've been working together now for many years and what i did was i used the same philosophy i found the first time that the team played a game and that was the the natal chart of the team wow so it's like the first like official movement or something like what what is that moment and and it's Why the, do you first, think it's the first breath. It's the first breath. Yes. Of course. 
Look, I, I don't want to get into politics. I try very hard to stay away from that, unless I'm doing a political webinar, right. in which case I'm looking at you know everybody's charts. But the first breath that an individual takes is the birth. Right. Okay? Okay. And so that's the chart that we use for your natal chart. There are also conception charts. They claim, some astrologers claim they can tell when you were first conceived. I don't. I've never spent too much time on that. Because frankly, just doing what I do is taking several lifetimes to perfect. Mm. And so I, I want to focus. I don't want to be scattered all over the place. That's mm. why I focus on whatever it is that I'm studying. Time. Mm -hmm. But there are useful tools that astrology can be used for in financial work. Now, certainly I focus on bubbles and busts. And what I learned in commodities was if you can tell the top or the bottom of a market, you can get rich. Hmm. If you know when, you know, cotton is going up, 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 that's the top of cotton. Now just short it and wait, it might still go up a little bit, but truthfully, if you're right, It'll come down to wherever your price is, and then you can collect what you from that trade go on to the next trade. So Mitch, again, do you think that, first of all, is it a misconception that very wealthy people actually don't use astrology? I think there's an assumption that, that wealthy people or successful people don't use astrology, but that's probably not true. That's not one, true. one question. Yeah, and okay. then, and then why why do you think it's not used by more people if it's so effective? Well, first of all, I have a number of immensely wealthy clients. Uh, and they don't only, you know, money doesn't make you happy. I mean, it may, it certainly makes it easier if you're miserable, but, you know, but it doesn't make you happy. It gives you some stability and security. What people come to me for isn't only financial, obviously. They want to know about their relationship or, or their children's health, or they, they want to buy a, a new house, or they're opening up a new company, or whatever it might be. I have business clients uh, all over the place, and um, they not only come to me for their business, uh, you know, uh, information, but also their personal stuff. They're married, they have two kids, they have this, they have that, their mother's sick. It's all connected. Mm. Can't separate. Look, you know, there's an old saying, rich or poor, it's good to have money. <laughs> uh, certainly, and not, and, and I, look, I, I've met many people who say to me, if astrology works, how come all astrologers aren't rich? Mm. Well, for one thing, not all astrologers are into it for the money. Right. Also, yes. we have our personal karma, mm -hmm. that terrible word that means maybe you weren't meant to be. Now, and, and in terms of why, why another, look, look, I, I recently spoke to a friend of mine, I've known for most of my life. I said to him, you, you're interested in seeing my financial webinar, I'll send you the link. He said to me, don't you know how I feel about astrology? I said, you know, I'm not sure we ever talked about it. He said, I think it's nonsense. I said, wow, really? <laughs> he said, yeah, when what, the stars are doing something to you? So I sat for a good half an hour and explained to him, not only are the stars not doing anything to us, you're sitting on a couch next to me. Saturn isn't pulling me differently than it's pulling you. That's not how astrology works. It's reflective of what's going on within our lives based on our birth time. Then I gave him a, a rundown of the predictions that I've made throughout my career and with clients. And I'd say to him, how could I know that this person has kidney disease and it's never been diagnosed? And I tell them from looking at a birth chart, a piece of paper. How could I tell that the stock market was going to crash in 08? Within a week of its occurrence, I made this prediction a year and a half in advance. Hmm. If astrology didn't work, I couldn't do this. You know, and he's a very bright guy. And he listened to me. And I said to him, you know what? We're going to have this conversation. He said, sure. Okay. You know, and we're all, we're all dear friends since childhood. And I never knew that he felt that. But some of the people who do come to me, you'd be amazed. I don't tell my clients' names. I would never embarrass them that way unless they said to me, tell them. You know. uh, uh, but I, you know, some of the most successful people, you know, the, you know, that I've ever met, and they come to me regularly for readings. And it's not, only, and, and, and the rich ones, they're not coming to me. I'm not going to tell a guy who runs a hedge fund and is worth $8 billion how to trade stocks. It's, he knows how to trade stocks, but he might come to me and say, well, what, how's my health? Let's draw up all the charts and I'll tell you. Mm. There's so many things that astrology can be used for. 
as you know. Mm-hmm. Um, this is probably what drew you to astrology. Yeah. The, the, the fact that, that you know. I, I was blown away at all the different ways because the, the place where I was, I was just in one of those dark nights of the soul and I needed the support about, you know, my path. But when I realized like, whoa, it can help you with money. It can help you with where to live. It can help you with your children. It can help you with, I mean, it was astounding how much it can help in so many different areas. Okay. So we talked about the potential for everyday people like me to learn some trading. What about things that everyday people like me again, and I'm saying everyday people, meaning just non, you know, I don't have a background in finance and it's not the, it's not the point of my life. Although of course it's a part of my life because it's a part of all of our lives. So what about things that, that we would be doing like buying and selling houses Right. Or, um, you know, deciding what to do with any money that we might have for retirement or those kinds of things. First of all, talk about money. I, I, I often say I've gotten used to eating almost every day. Uh, we need money. We don't live in an ashram. We need a bowl of rice and meditate. We live in the, in, 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 uh, you know, uh, uh, the world that we live in and you got to buy and sell and do stuff. And whatever. these are questions that people come to me with, oh, I want to buy a house. I want to sell a house. What do you think? Well, not only do I have to know what the astrology says, but I got to pay attention to the news. I had a client call me up. He's got a half dozen houses, all of them in the Southwest. The price of them have risen tremendously. He's thinking of selling one or two. What do I think? And my answer to him was, you have to make this decision, but I will tell you how I feel. Lake Mead is disappearing. The Great Salt Lake is disappearing. The Colorado and Snake Rivers are disappearing. There's no water. If you have a huge profit, now I'm not even talking about politics or the future or it's doomsday. I'm not a doomsday prophet. You know, I, I believe in balance. You have a half a dozen houses that have exploded in value. They've made, they've doubled in value. Well, it's like anything else. If a stock has gone up and up and up and up and up and you're going to be, there's a, there's a saying in Wall Street, bulls make money. Bears make money. Pigs get slaughtered. Mm. Take mm. your profit and leave. Mm. Well, should I buy a house in Las Vegas? Well, I wouldn't. I could be wrong, and maybe they'll find a you know a way to create water, and maybe there'll be a big flood, and I could be wrong. Mm. But what the news and history and 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 patterns is telling me is, if I was going to buy a house right now, I would be buying it in the Northeast or maybe in certain areas of California. All of California is not burning up; it's just in a very bad drought, and this is akin to the Dust Bowl that happened in the twenties. And remember, I may have said this in the webinar, I don't remember, the depression started for farmers years before the stock market crash of 29. They were already in the depression, good five, six, seven years before. Mm. Um, so what I do, of course, if it's a client who calls me and says, well, I don't know what to do with my money. What do you suggest? And I'll make suggestions. And when it comes to the housing market, see, this is another thing why it's come. People say to me, well, I, I pre- not only did I predict the crash of 08, but I predicted the very month of the top of the housing market, mm. Saturn, which rules housing and rules banks had been in cancer, which rules the inside of the home. And the, the, the housing market had exploded in this mortgage debacle that they had created right in the, in the early 2000s. And then Saturn was about to leave cancer, go into Leo and begin an opposition to Neptune. Those of your listeners who don't follow enough astrology, it's okay. I show it in the webinar. I show that chart exactly. And I did that for a point because I wanted them to understand this was a housing crash. Mm. And the housing market is what created the stock market crash. It created Lehman Brothers collapse. And it created the collapse of what they call pigs. Portugal, Italy, Spain, Greece, P-I-G-S. All those countries had their money along with Iceland and Ireland in the American mortgage mortgage securities. Mm-hmm. And when that collapsed, they all almost went out of business. Mm. So today people say to me, what about the housing market? And I say to them, where? where? It's not one big piece. In it. Right. You want to buy a house in Florida? Okay. You want to buy it in Miami? Well, I'm not mm-hmm. sure Miami's going to be there much. I love Miami. I love the water. I'm a water baby. And, and uh, um, right in the middle of, of Miami is... Um, uh, I forget that street, what it's called, right in the middle. And it's uh, uh, it has shopping malls and huge buildings. And it's, you know, big, tremendous. And now when there's a full moon or there's uh, 
um, high tide is two, three feet of water mm. that cover that street. And they're all scratching their heads and saying, well, what they're thinking of doing in Miami, not Miami Beach, is building this gigantic water wall. The problem is that nobody would ever see the ocean. So why would you spend $3 million on an apartment to look at a wall? Right, yeah. yes. So it depends on where they're thinking of moving. They all are, they all trade in patterns. The question is what those patterns are. In the webinar that, we're, that you're about to release to your people, uh, I even went out of my way to show, as you, as you, if you remember, that the crash of 1929 was this big, and the crash of 1931 was five times deeper, mm -hmm. and the stocks went right back down to where they had been in 1907 when there was a huge stock market crash. That's how long the market's memory is. People, not so much. But when you understand those patterns a little bit more. Now, I don't think that the stock market is going to crash. First of all, I don't think we're going to see a stock market crash this year. We're seeing a bear market and we are seeing inflation and there may be a mild recession. We don't know today. There was some news that it's the second quarter of downturns. In the meantime, the market's closed up 400 and something. Mm. I don't even know where it is because I wasn't watching. Um, our economy is very strong. In fact, our economy is too strong. Mm. And that's one of the reasons why, remember, inflation is not an American problem. It's a global problem. It's happening everywhere. But the dollar has become so strong that interferes with imports and exports mm. because the commodity, the currencies trade against each other. The dollar trades against the euro and the yen and the pound and all of the rest of this. And they move accordingly. And when the dollar is too strong, well, then it costs too much money for foreign countries and foreign people to buy our products. Mm. And that affects our exports. Mm. And so these are also things that, that... Okay, Mitchell, speak to me as if I know nothing about astrology. And I'm wondering why this works. Like, how does this work? Why would the planets and the stars have any impact on money like just can you just speak well, to me like i know nothing about astrology but amanda why would the planets have any influence on our lives I well let's pretend i don't believe they do okay so i can tell you how astrology works in three words we don't know <laughs> that is so good oh my god oh but i will why but, it works we don't know why it works we yeah. don't know why it works. Right. We, you know, people have their philosophies. Well, there are tiny little particles that are pulling you differently. Okay, whatever. I honestly, we don't, really I don't know. know. We don't. Yeah. Know. Mm -hmm. Most of the most of the astrologers that I speak to, at the end of at the end of a conversation about why astrology works, they'll get to like we really just don't know. These we are all know. theories or ideas of right. how it could work, but yeah, we know that it does work. Yeah. When I first started doing astrology. When I first started studying up in Cambridge and Izzy was giving a class and she's talking about world predictions and so on. And so on. I said, look, I can understand because I, you know, I'm fairly intelligent and I, I'm a little precocious and I understand if Venus is in this sign, it affects how you relate to women or whatever it might be. But there is no way in hell that you can predict world events. I have subsequently predicted dozens of world events because I continue to study and to learn and to understand the bigger picture. Again, there's the here and now, there's the immediate, and then there's how do we fit into the universe? Um, you go back to financial. Uh, I think that Apple is going to go up because it's been beaten down. So I'll buy 100 shares of Apple and it runs up $5. I made 500 whatever, $500. I sell it. Okay. Or there's the bigger picture. I'm going to buy Apple. I'm going to leave it in my retirement fund. Don't worry about it 20 years. And truthfully, the stock market, if the stock market doesn't come back after a bear market, then we're going to be eating each other in a year because the, the whole world will collapse. It's mm. not going to happen. I don't believe in it. Mm. I do believe that, that humanity is on an edge with global change, with climate change, and with some other issues. At any point, some lunatic could say, oh, well, you know, well, what does this button do? <laughs> you know? But short of that, I, I don't believe. Uh, look, we saw a crash in 08 that was horrible. And it took only a few years for the markets to come back to where they were. Again, I'll go over all this in the webinar, as you know. That, that in the depression, it took 25 years and it's different. Then in 2020, I also predicted they were going to have a huge down. The markets collapsed and turned right back around and shot right back up. If you had just stayed there or if you were smart enough and you sold it and then you bought it back, you would have made a ton of money. You would have made all your money back in a very short period of time. Of course, that was a pandemic fear inspired 
crash. And when panic sets in, that's when people make mistakes. Mm. Why does astrology work in terms of financial markets? Because astrology works in cycles and financial markets work in cycles. If you can correlate the two cycles, then you got it. Exactly. It's quite simple, isn't it? I, I was speaking to a man who works in... Um, <clears throat> actually like financial it's it, it, it kind of made me creeped out honestly because it's financial data mining essentially is and so they're 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 looking at cycles of buying behavior and then they're trying to to make predictions on whether or not you would be a good person with credit or not for example mm-hmm. and so they're they're watching buying behavior and they're mining all the data and but we, we were uh, in a conversation at a, a like family gathering event that he happened to be at and I, w- he just started asking me about astrology and I started sharing, you know, it's, it's cycles. It's, and because the movements of the planets correlate with certain cycles on the planet, it can be quite predictive because you can start to track these things through history. And you can see that, you know, certain plant, certain movements of the planets are always correlated with certain types of things happening here. And I mean, his eyes just lit up. It was like, oh God, like I could see that he was seeing that this could be, uh, like you said earlier, a, a big payday. Yeah. So anyways, but, but what I'm saying is, is it was, he could understand because it was, it was similar to the world that he's in where there is predictive patterns. I'll give you a great example of an astrology pattern that goes on in our society. Saturn takes 28 and a half years to go around the sun. It has a circular orb. It's always the same, 28 and a half years. Pluto has an elliptic orb, so it kind of moves like that. So we have divided our society into seven-year cycles. Mm-hmm. At seven, you get, uh, you know, in, in the Catholic Church, you have a certain ceremony. You start school. At 14, now you're in high school. You get a confirmation. If you're Jewish, you, have bar, you got a bar mitzvah. At 21, look at the battle over guns. No, we want you to, to wait till you're 21. Mm-hmm. What is 21? To Saturn square. Mm. Saturn in your chart. At seven, it squares Saturn. At 14, it opposes Saturn. At 21, it squares Saturn again. And then at 29, you know, hopefully you start to grow up when you're 30, although I've yet to meet a grown up, but you know. Yeah. And that's a perfect example. Why 21? What an arbitrary figure. True. Astrologically, it makes perfect sense because you've gone through your second Saturn square. You're supposed to be at least a little more mature. I wouldn't want a 21-year-old to handle my finances or or a submachine gun in my a lot of things. Yeah. But I but you understand why that that's the number that they chose. And in financial astrology, are we mainly looking at outer planet transits or do we also get into the inner planets? When I trade uh, commodities, most of it had to do with inner planets and often their correlation to the outer planets. Okay. Okay. And then when we're looking at bigger cycles, are we looking at outer planets or still inner planets? Mm-hmm. Outer planet aspects can take a long time. As you know, Pluto can take three years to complete an aspect. What sets it off the trigger is the inner planets. Mm-hmm. It could be a full moon. It could be Mars passing by, even a, a retrograde Mercury, whatever it is. All of a sudden, you've got Saturn or, and Pluto opposing your sun. And now you're, you're okay. And then a mild, um, an inner planet, quick moving inner planet comes along and boom, your whole world blows. So it, it's the correlation, again, the here and now, the small, the minutia, and then the bigger picture. In terms of stock market crashes, things like that, outer planets. Okay. In terms of timing a trade, then I use both. Okay. Now, what about the interplay with our natal chart? How much do you look at a person's individual chart when you're looking at the financial landscape versus sort of the collective trends? So, so for example, maybe there's a depression, but then some in someone's chart, like individually, this is going to be the biggest boon ever for them. Absolutely. And during the depression, people got immensely wealthy. Right. Because if you had bought the stock market, if you had 12 cents in 1931, it went up for the next six years. People are living down by the East River in cardboard houses and the stock market goes up to six years. So the the answer to your question is actually, it's a great question and it's complicated. Certainly there are periods of time that are better for the individual than others. It's not just a matter of what's happening in your chart. It's a matter again of how much you know. I have some clients who only short the market. Shorting the market, by the way, for those of you listeners who don't understand, in the financial markets, you can sell something that you don't own. Hmm. You can say, I'm shorting Apple. 
I don't own any stocks in Apple. I'm selling. And I, that means I think the mark that Apple is going to go down. A uh, very difficult concept for people to understand until they've traded a few times. Then they say, oh, I get it. It's like going to the crap table and playing the don't pass. Guy's going to crap out. He's going to throw a seven before he hits his number. I'm going to make money. Mm. He's going to lose money. I'm going to make. So I have certain clients who really only like to short. So they wait until there's a downturn. Then they start writing me and taking readings from me and saying, well, what do you think? And I say to them, look, from now until October or November, every time the market rallies, sell it mm -hmm. and wait, wait, it'll come back up again, sell it. <laughs> now, there are other times when every time the market goes down, buy it based on the individual's chart. Also, when I was on the floor of the exchange, most of my clients were, first of all, men, because the majority of people on Wall Street are still men, although that is changing quite a bit. Um, and they all came to me for readings and they wanted to know, how's my health? Uh, how's my marriage? When am I going to make money? And how should I trade? Should I be a day trader? Should I be a long term trader? In a, an astrology chart, the fifth house is the house of children, creativity, games, gambling. Mm. The fifth house is day trading. Buy it, sell it, buy it, sell it. The opposite house, the 11th house, is long-term trading. It's long-term hopes and wishes. If somebody has a very powerful 11th house and a weakened fifth house, I tell them, you should be buying things and holding them, putting some into your retirement fund, take some, some you trade and you take your profits off and then you put it back in later. And some people I say to them, you're a gambler. This is what you want to do. Wow. Oh, that's fascinating. And they go in and out, in and out, in and out, and they make a living. Mm, wow. Okay. Are there any other like sort of rules of thumb that you could, that you could share with us? Like, um, you know, go-to tools or, or techniques that you use? When trading? Well, yeah, I guess that's too vague of a question. Um, when helping people understand what to do with their money? Well, then you have to take into account everything, including the time you're living. How old are you? I'm 35. I'm 70. Okay. Mm -hmm. You're 35, you know what? Buy the stocks, hold them, don't look back. Mm. You're 75, you're going to need that money in the next five years. You may not want to keep that. And a lot of people call me at all different ages. What should I do with my retirement? I'm blah, blah, blah. Recently, I had I had people before the, the inflation kicked in. I had a number of people, older people especially, who, who would uh, call me and we'd talk and they'd say to me, I'm, I want to pay off my mortgage. I'm afraid the world's going to. Say to them, what's your mortgage rate? They say to me, 3%. Say to them, you'd be out of your mind to pay off your mortgage. You can buy AT&T stock and make 7% and make 4% on your money watching TV in your underwear. Why would you sell you? Why would you get rid of your mortgage? The government's giving you money for 3%. There's an old saying, Amanda, common sense is not that common. Mm. And when you trade in stocks and bonds and commodities and anything, there is, a, there is common sense that goes along with it. Yes, I take into account your chart, whoever's chart, as well as what's happening and what's going to happen over the next two years and so on and so forth. But I also pay attention to what's happening in the world. This is why there are some people who, who study financial astrology, but they don't study the financial markets. Mm, mm. So I question how useful their information is. Mm, yeah. All of the really good financial astrologers I know in this about a half a dozen. They've worked their ass off. They, they've studied these, these cycles and these markets and they know what they're talking about. Mm -hmm. And that's what makes them good for their clients and good for them for their, for their trading account, Frank. So it's, you know, there, there are so many variables that go into, but that's my job to take into account all of the potential variables. How old are you? Are you married? How's your health? You know, you have children you have to take care of, whatever it might be. Then, okay, how much money have you got? Okay, you have this much money and this much is freed up. Well, you know, right now I'm telling people they have to trade defensively. Mm. You buy the two-year bonds. There are actually, there's what's called an inversion. Two-year bond is paying more than the 10-year bond. Usually the longer term bonds pay more because you're holding on to it for longer. But now because of the unsuredness in the markets and in the world, the shorter bonds are paying more. So, you, you know, you're not going to get rich from them, but they pay you a little bit. And then I love dividend paying stocks. And there are, there are funds that only carry dividend paying stocks and they'll make you seven, eight percent. Well, in this environment, that's not bad. That keeps up with inflation, please. Mm -hmm. Whereas people who, you know, everybody, when it's a bull market, everybody's a genius. I made so much money. I'm so smart. I bought stocks and helped. I get it. That's a bull market. What do you do in a bear market? There, look, there are investment counselors who are young and they've never seen a bear market before. They're getting their heads handed to them, right? They don't mm. know what to do. Mm. Uh, and that has nothing to do with astrology. It has to do with, again, common sense. Mm. And, and another thing too 
is that the hardest thing for any trader to do, even if they've been on the floor for 25 years, is to get into a trade or get out of the trade. Once you're in it, well, whatever. Get up in the morning and make money. Okay, you know, great. But to, to and, and people are frightened to get out of a trade. And look, in the, after the crash of 2008, when many of my friends pulled out their stocks, I told them there would be a second crash in 2010 because the Saturn Uranus opposition was occurring in another sign. And, and right there, I said, this is where you get back in, you buy it. And a lot of people were frightened to do it. Mm, mm, so they yeah. lost the big movement. Mm. Uh, you know, and I'm not going to always be right, Amanda. It's not, you know, it's not my job. I can't be 100%. Right. But but my track record is pretty darn good. Pretty darn and, good, yeah. Yeah. And I I understand. And, I, and again, I give the information out in such a way that here's what I think. Here's what I see. Now, you mull this over and you decide if you want to do that, believe in it, if you can afford to take the risk, whatever it might be. Those are decisions the individual has to make. Yeah. And that's what I love. It's this. The idea here is just to give you information that you can use. It's like another data point. And, you know, Mitch, as you were speaking, I was reminded of something um, that this person that I used to know was, he, he was in real estate and he was very successful in San Francisco and in the Bay Area of real estate. And one of the things he taught me was that you make money when you buy. And I couldn't like wrap my head around this. I was like, what do you mean you make money when you buy? I don't get it. But it's exactly what you're talking about. Knowing when the, when it's low and that there's going to be an upswing in whatever you're investing in. So when you buy is actually very important. And like you've pointed out today, when you sell is really I important. see this as a buying opportunity, what we're going through right now. Mm. Now that doesn't mean you might not suffer some pain, mm. but that's why if you need the money to buy your groceries and pay your rent, you shouldn't be trading. Right, yeah. I don't care, I don't care how smart. Right. But if you have some money and you know, or you can raise somebody, you've got an uncle who believes in you and you get $20,000. And so using this information, and again, when the stock market crashes, the rich stand on the sideline and buy it. Mm. It's the middle class that gets hysterical. Oh my God, look at my 401k. I'm so frightened. And they sell at the worst possible time. And then you can't get them back in. And they took a terrible beating and it takes them five, seven years to get them up. It's not the way to trade. Mm -hmm. So again, it's not just the astrology. It's using the astrology, but it's knowing what money is about. Mm, yeah. Okay. Pretend I'm a financial person <laughs> and you're you're uh, telling me why it would be smart to include astrology in my practice. Oh, you're a financial person? Give me a million dollars, I'll make you a million. <laughs> Guaranteed? <Easy>. Absolutely. <laughs> and if not, you can find me in Costa Rica. Um, what you can't, you can't convince somebody of something that they don't want to be convinced. True. It's impossible. You can scream and carry on and bang your head against the wall and they're still going to have their beliefs. Totally. We see it politically, we see it socially, we see it in every other fashion. It's no different. Why should I believe in astrology? Astrology is nonsense. What are you, crazy? Uh, Sir Isaac Newton was probably one of the three or four smartest people that ever lived. And he was considered a genius in his day. And he was an avid follower of astrology. And his friends would say to him, you're such a smart person. Look at you. You're what a pussycat. Why do you believe in this nonsense? And supposedly, because I wasn't there, but this is what old, his answer was, sir, I have studied. You have not. Mm. After you study astrology, I know people who didn't believe in astrology. And they said, this is absolute nonsense. I said, okay, do a little homework. They did some homework and they come to me, they go, how can this work? I don't understand. How is this possible? What are you kidding me? I don't, I don't believe it. And they, and again, you know, I, I did a, 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 a thing, you know, I think it was a panel thing for a group, I forget where they were, because I, I do these things all over the country, all over the world, actually. And um, the, the host wanted to talk about medical astrology. And there were, you know, people on the chat room. And so this guy says, here's, you know, here's my, my birth information. Tell me what's wrong. Punched up his chart. I looked at it. I said, you got kidney disease. He said, stage three. How did you know? So that's how I convince people to do astrology. And some of the people who come, who have been with me now for 20 years, when they first started, they said, oh, yeah, okay, sure. And I told them some stuff. And then two years later, they come back to me and say, everything you told me came true. Yeah. What do you, well, give me more. It's That's, like the proof, the proof is in the pudding. Right. That's exactly yeah. right. Yeah. yeah. So all of these variables connect. And the way to make use of the knowledge that I have and of the years of experience that I've had 
Uh, part of it is what we're going to do in, next week or in two weeks, the Q&A. If the people have watched the webinar, then they're going to have questions and they'll, they'll send them to you and I'll try to answer as many as I can. If I don't know the answer, I'll tell you. I, yeah, I don't know. I'm not a tax expert, for example. Even my accountant pulls his hair out of his head because of the changes in the tax laws the last couple of years. Um, but that's why I hired him. Let's let him pull his hair out. <laughs> Yeah. Well, let's let's go there, Mitch. What 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 are the the break? What's the breakdown of what's covered in the webinar? So, and let me just back up for a sec. So, when I watched that webinar, it was a one-time thing that Mitch did, and as I was watching it, it was like, oh my gosh, I have to be able to share this with our community. They are going to love it, both from the perspective of people, you know, from the perspective of astrology and just the very fascinating study that Mitch has done between those correlations of the astrological cycles and the different markets, including um, inflation, including gas prices, including housing markets, including stocks, you know, all of it. So that was fascinating just from that perspective alone as astro geeks who love that, that piece of it. But then it was also really grounding for me because it gave me this perspective, you know, as you're hearing that, you know, the world is ending or, you know, everything's falling apart. And it was, it was very amazing to anchor in where we've been and compare that to where we're at right now. And then make some, you know, informed decisions and predictions about where it's going to go. So it was, it was really helpful. It gave me a lot of peace, you know, and I love that you're, you have a very realistic perspective. I would say it's, it's not overly optimistic or overly pessimistic it felt like you're 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 considering it all you know the astrology the history where we're at as a unique period of time and so anyways i'm watching this webinar and i know it's a one time only thing and so that's why when i reached out to to Mitch I was like can i make this available to our community and can we make that even sweeter and make it available to the community but then add a Q and A because I did walk away with some questions that I would want really wanted to have answered, like specific questions about specific decisions that that I'm trying to make. And so he agreed yes to both allow our community to participate in the webinar, and we've added a live Q and A that we're going to be doing on August 11th. So you'll have the chance to submit your questions and get them answered by Mitch at that uh, August 11th Q&A. And if you can't make it live, it'll be recorded and you'll still have the, the opportunity to, to submit your question, even if you can't make it live. So make sure you go to astrologyhub.com slash finances to check out the whole thing and see if you'd like to participate in it. But again, I was so excited because as I'm watching this, I'm going, oh my God, I need to be able to share this with my community. It's gold, like literally it's amazing. It's brilliant. It's so well done. So um, yeah, Mitch, that's I, one of the reasons I was so excited when you said yes. Great to hear, Amanda. You know, I, mean, I, I love a pat on the back every now and then. <laughs> Big pat on the back. It was but awesome. It was remember, awesome. Remember, this this webinar is part of an ongoing thing that I that I I do, and that I'm hoping yeah. we can continue with too, yeah. and expand into other other uh, other topics and things. Um, it and I cover a lot in this webinar, and so I could didn't have time to focus on oil for 40 minutes, right? housing market for 40 minutes. I had to jump from one to the other. What I'm hoping that possibly we can do if we expand this, if your, your community enjoys it and wants more of it, is to then go back and either do a series of classes or a series of webinars or however we set it up and delve more deeply into these individual markets and the ways that we can use this tool to make educated decisions. If you want to use astrology to help you inform those types of decisions, to be another data point that you're considering, along with your intuition and your gut and your, you know, all those things as well. Um, and then all the other research that you're doing in your life. If you want astrology to be part of that decision-making, I highly recommend that you start with the webinar that we now have to offer you at astrologyhub.com slash finances. It is an amazing starting point. 
It's going to help you get anchored in what's happening right now, taking what's happened in the past into consideration and all the astrological astrological cycles. And it, and then you get to join us for the live Q and a. So that's where you're going to have this opportunity to ask some of your specific questions. I'm sure many of us are wondering the same things. So no matter what, you're going to get some of your questions answered at that live Q and a. So you can join us. If you, when you join, you're going to get immediate access to the webinar. This is the same two hour webinar that I sat mesmerized watching 7am Saturday morning. So you'll get access to that right away. You can watch it at your leisure, at your convenience. And then I would just recommend watching it in time to join us for that August 11th um, Q&A and to have a little bit of time to submit your questions if you walk away with some, some questions after you watch it. So Mitch, thank you for making this available to us. I feel so lucky and so honored. And I'm so grateful to Gary, my love, to who was like, you need to pay attention to this guy. It was so, so funny because I used to have a coast to coast subscription and he was like, and, and I let it expire because they have like a membership and then you can watch, you can do recordings. And he was like, it's worth it. Like you should re re up for their subscription, just so you can listen to this. If you can't catch it live now, I was like, okay, wow. I'm paying attention. Um, still he's, Gary, he's thank you. I'm, I'm <laughs> very glad he found, he found me and I'm very glad I found you. Yes. And he's been right on about all of his calls. So he, he definitely has his pulse on, on me and then us because we we've it's resulted in some really amazing astrologers on this platform and coast to coast too. Like it's, it's amazing to be able to find some amazing um, people through George Nori and his work. And yeah, I'm grateful yeah. for that too. Yeah. Uh, I've been talking to George now. It must be about 12 years. I've been a regular on his show. I enjoy it all the time, even though it's three o'clock in the morning. And I <laughs> yeah, it's a reasonable time for us in Hawaii. Yeah, I get it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, okay. So thanks to all of you. Thank you for your interest. Thank you for uh, being welcoming to a new astrologer here at Astrology Hub, a new astrologer on this platform. And let us know if there's particular things about financial astrology that you're interested in. I am in talks with Mitch about lots of different things we could do because this is an area that I feel we have underserved you. Like there's a lot to explore. And he's also a medical astrologer too, which is another place that I know a lot of you have tons of interest in. So let us know in the chat and please check out the webinar. We would love to have you join us. And again, that's at astrologyhub.com slash finances. Okay, Mitch, thank you so much. Thank you for thank you, being- Amanda, great chatting with you. You too, as always. And thank you for being here for your Astrology Hub debut. And I oh. cannot wait to connect with you again soon. Thank you to everyone for tuning into this episode, for being a part of our community, and as always, for making astrology a part of your life.